everyone. Welcome back to Deep Dive, episode number 10. Today I'd like to talk about um, tackling pieces that were written for pianists with slightly larger hands than myself. As you know, I play a lot of Rachmaninoff repertoire and Rachmaninoff had a reach that was much bigger than my hand. He could reach a 12th, they say, which is if you start from a C, it's up an octave and all the way to a G. That's a 12th and there's absolutely no way I can get anywhere close to that. The biggest I can um, reach is C and then maybe a couple of um, notes after that. But if there are any notes in between that, if I had to play a chord, really is very difficult for this sized hand. Uh, even though I can play most of the repertoire without uh, much trouble, there are places in many different pieces where I need to apply different techniques in order to get around not having that slight more distance than some other pianists. So let's explore together. When looking at a section that requires a big chord or a big interval to be played, I think it's important to always remember to uh, keep your body relaxed. I think as soon as you try to reach a big chord, you start doing this. And as you can see, my shoulders are going up, everything's tensing up. And when you're feeling this tension, it's very difficult to make music or think about music. In the second movement of Beethoven's third piano concerto, we have... It's an oscillating, broken interval. So we have happening. Um, this is a tenth, so octave and one, two more, which is my maximum. And I need to oscillate on it quite quickly. So um, instead of reaching my hand out to put my hands on the tenth, I leave my hand relaxed. Um, and I find really the... The middle of that, which um, it's not the exact middle, but I put my my index finger on a G. It's never playing. It's just nestled between F sharp and G sharp. And that as my center, middle of the seesaw, I mainly move this way instead of like this. If you're doing this, I'm feeling tension even in my jaw, um, but when you use your elbow and sort of rock back and forth, and you don't have to really stretch out to get the right notes, you can sort of rest your hand slightly smaller and sort of use that seesaw to go back and forth and travel the distance because um, as soon as it becomes a natural movement, you will be able to get there on time. So. Of, which would tense up and then you wouldn't be able to really hear the notes clearly anymore. I want it to ring sort of like much easier with two hands. Like this kind of like a timpani. Timpani roll. So that really works. Whenever there is an oscillating figure, when two notes go back and forth, Decide where the middle is, put your weight on that, not at the ends, and then simply seesaw back and forth. Now let's talk about Rachmaninoff. Um, I think this is where people have most problem or people ask me all the time, how can you play his repertoire when your hands are so much smaller than his? So starting with the Paganini Rhapsody, we have this section. <laughs> So all of those chords 
chords are quite large, even though they're um, octave filled in three notes in between the octave. So there are with each chord, there's 10 notes. So all 10 fingers are playing and constantly switching to different notes. And this is a very climactic buildup. Um, there's a lot of tension. I should feel very comfortable to tug and pull with the orchestra, move ahead if it needs it, or you know, pull back if it's slightly falling apart. I need to be quite flexible here. So all of these guys need to be um, quite easily achieved. And as soon as you start getting locked into these chords and getting locked in sort of your body locking into the chord as well, I think it's very hard to um, navigate forward. So my advice here, when you see a section where it's just big block chords where all of your hands, all of your fingers are playing different notes and you need to navigate quite quickly, it's important to play them short. Let the pedal help you here. Um, if I take the pedal off, you would hear this. As soon as you, you play the chord, you need to move to the next chord. And because the pedal is down, it, it, it links it together. That's one of the most useful um, pedal spots. And so as soon as you play a big chord, always voice it. That's very important. So not all 10 notes are the same dynamic. It's always the top that needs to, it's the guiding light forward. So instead of, you tell the difference? Yeah. Make sure you are constantly shifting to the next chord and not hanging on to it and putting the tension there because you don't want to get locked um, in, into these chords. As soon as you strike one, you want to move to the next. So that's one of the tricks that I use um, in order to navigate this kind of um, section forward and with ease. In Rachmaninoff's Opus 32, number 12, Prelude, we have this. This role is very emotional in my opinion it's almost like you know we're dying down to piano and just when we thought you know you have accepted your fate this chord comes out saying it's a little defiant it's almost like you're not giving up yet there's some um, very emotionally charged feelings happening um, there for me and uh, that's really the chord I look forward to when I play this prelude so when we have this kind of significant big chord roll, we can play it really um, one of three ways. Now we're looking very technically. It's, it's, a, it's a big chord, so unless you have hands like Rachmaninoff, which not many people do, you have to travel the distance and then there is a good chance you're going to miss that last note. <laughs> especially because one, two, three, four notes, first three are um, white keys and the fourth is a black key, which um, really forces your arm to travel toward the piano to reach that black key because it's closer um, to this side. So it makes sense that your arm has to move into the piano. But this last note, um, is is the one that you should crescendo toward and because it's very emotionally charged any number of things could happen your hand might be clammy or sticky or oily or you might be overcome with emotions from earlier so not getting that d sharp is definitely an option so when playing these kind of big chords we need to decide what is the most uh the safest way what um 
what kind of insurance can you buy to make sure that you will land on that court cleanly and with, with meaning? So first way is to play it as is. So I, I use the fingers one, two, four, five. So it's a one motion, it's like a scoop. It's like a, you go, it's like a semicircle moving this way. That's option one. Option two is to play one, two, five. So this is very comfortable. So first three, you're not gonna miss, no way. And then for the third note, you flip your hand, not literally, but you're, putting you, your third finger is traveling even more than your pinky so you're sort of it's one two five and then three so you're you're sort of um, starting over um, and that sometimes works very well again you have to go into the keys and then the third option is for your left hand to flip over and play that last note so that's another option so these are the ways you can really divide a large chord um, I like to keep it as is just because in Rachmaninoff there are so many things going on in the left hand that um, this jumping is another issue and when it's done with that note and it's to jump back so sometimes it feels like i'm buying even more trouble by um, making my left hand travel uh, but in this way um, in this section i like to just use a natural fingering which is not flipping just moving up with the pinky but the only way I discovered um, that I can really reach it without worrying about it too much is not using the end of my pinky, but using sort of the middle of my pinky. So I would arrive. So my, my tip is not touching the key at all. It's the, it's, I make my pinky kind of flat, move my elbow. So my elbow is in, in front of the last note that I'm about to play. If my elbow's here, it's very, very difficult to get the note right. This has to make sure that the whole body moves this way and I'm, I just have to move inside to the piano. So... section here um, in this prelude where I use technique number two which is really um, flipping uh, I really wish I had um, another finger here or an extra hand for that matter with Rachmaninoff but um, shortly later we have this used it as a semicircle just in one one movement but I use one two four five and then I flip back and use the four again which for me is the safest choice because um, um, this chord is quite loud and the left hand roars before that and this has to be sort of a one um, powerful thing and if I use the one, two, three, four, five um, as the right hand, then my right hand will sound uh, weaker than my left hand, which um, would take away from the drama of this section. So in order for me to really achieve that, um, that tension, that um, full forte sound, I need to redistribute my hands um, in the way that really works for me. And for me, it's when it's one, two, four, five, this is a, an octave, which is very easy for me. I can play this quite loudly and then go into that last note and achieve this last chord.
These set of questions can be asked in uh, the example I played for you in last week's deep dive, the 18th variation of Rachmaninoff Paganini Rhapsody. <laughs> choices are playing this big chord, rolled chord, one, two, three, four, five, and drawing a big semicircle in that way, you would really consider the first four notes to be a small chord in its own, and then you have to get to the top. So again, travel with your elbow, make that space available so you can go directly into the keys. all um, as the same. The first four are different from that last note. This would organize this chord in your mind so you're not concerned about every single note. Because first four, since it sort of fits into your hand, um, there'd be very little chance you would miss it. Really make sure that transition is clear. So if you want to play it with the flip over, you can of course play it one, two, four, five, and then use three. Or you can um, I just learned about this way. You can really bring your left hand over. ways you use, I think what's important for this um, section is to make these melodies sing. So whatever um, you feel most comfortable with, you have to go with that option because the thing about performing, as soon as you don't have that confidence that you're going to make that role, the whole section will suffer and um, that chord will sort of stick out from the texture and you really want it to all melt in together and having that assurance that you would make it whatever ways you do um, would really uh, make that section soar. So rolling these big chords either gets solved by stretching out my hand and playing it with one gesture flipping my hand and using the finger that I just used on the very top or bringing my left hand over to get that top note. One of these three options usually work out, but <laughs> there is a wonderful example in Rachmaninoff's third piano concerto where I use two out of these three techniques to make the big chord soar. <laughs> to start from the peak without the build-up leading up to it. Uh, but this big chord, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine notes roll up. And um, so how to execute it is the left hand does a very big chord roll, and then there's a, there's a minor chord roll, and then we have these two notes on top. And I could really play them both with left hand flip. But the melody continues on the right hand. So the right hand need to be next to it to take over. So I decided to not only flip the left hand, but flip the right hand after that. <laughs> so there are two flips. So why not just play the whole thing with the right hand? I sort of um, like the drama of the left hand, you know, taking that power from um, this side of the keyboard all the way up. It's sort of a visceral um, experience when I perform it. And if I had to play with the right hand, these two notes, 
um, because I would flip onto a, a thumb. And as we all know, <laughs> at this point, the thumb really could be much louder than others. So um, it could overshadow the ultimate goal of this journey, which is the one after that. So this has a beautiful quality. If you play it with the left hand, it had plenty of time to travel there because it could travel while the right hand is playing. And then while this note is playing, the, the right hand can travel. So that's really the, the ins and outs of that chord. And um, you have to do, again, what is comfortable um, as a performer, but it's also the choice that um, I think fulfills the role of this chord, um, what the Rachmaninoff um, melody is trying to tell me. Really, I have to go toward that gorgeous chord, and it has to be lyrical, it has to be even, and there has to be this um, amazing roar coming out of that chord. And after all the experiments, those are the, the two ways that I found with the two flips, I would make that chord um, sing exactly the way I think Rachmaninoff would have intended. So let's talk about blocked chords. Rachmaninoff did not intend pianists to roll, but unfortunately, because my hands are smaller, I would have to roll in order to play all the notes. For example, in the third movement, uh, toward the end of the Rachmaninoff's third piano concerto, we have these chords. case because I think this um, has these chords are quite noble in a way there's a lot of craziness right before and then it all comes to a standing still and I have these these chords it's almost like what happened I think if I roll them somehow it takes away from the stillness. So I, I depress the first one very softly and then play the rest of it as a block chord. So instead of one block chord, it's like one note, then a block chord. So I like to divide them differently depending on what mood I think um, the section needs. Beginning of Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto, here I really wish I had bigger hands. <laughs> It's that gorgeous beginning that starts in F minor. I tell you the piece is in C minor, but the pianist just appears in the darkness with these magical chords. I think the left hand in the beginning cannot really be rolled or divided. Um, the next chord I need to play is this. The second chord it has to be so soft. There is um, nothing I can do to reach that chord. Um, all those notes together without hitting wrong notes in between. So here I have two choices um, to break them. So one, two, break it into two or roll them. Neither of which I like. 
um, because I think in the beginning it needs to be really just one sound I love the stillness of that one chord so for the um, for that one I actually leave that F out and here as well and then I started to break so these I can't play um, so I have to go one two break them here as well but by then I think um, certain tension um, has been released and it's a it's a dominant chord that has some light to it and it's it's heading somewhere so I think I can break the chord and give you that a little bit more energy by the time we get there I think um, breaking it um, gives it some kind of um, interesting power uh, but right in the beginning I just really hate to um, break those chords so after much thought I've um, decided to play the first few without the the bottom so you don't hear two sounds and I keep the pedal down um, straight without changing them for a few measures so the F can ring, so even if I'm not playing the, that F, it sort of lives in my imagination. So here are the techniques that I use to navigate uh, through these repertoire that require slightly larger hands than myself. I think it's important to always think about um, what the composer is trying to say through those big chords. If it's something dramatic, um, I like to roll them. If it's something um, that's standing still, I sort of try to divide them so I can mimic the standing still uh, mood a little bit better. So it really is not about getting all the notes in at the right time, but even if you have to sacrifice a little bit of um, the accuracy of the notes, getting that image, that, um, that atmosphere, uh, just right for that music to be um, something truly special. So hope you go explore different ways to play these big repertoire even though um, you may not be able to um, hit all the notes uh, as, as specified by the composer. Thanks for watching. See you next week.